All right, guys, we got a ream system here, four ton heat pump that I put in. Now let's look right here. There you go, there's the date. When I got here, the, the complaint is, is that uh, they got it set on 70 and never dropped below 76 past two days. When I got here, I saw a little ice on the suction line. I'm thinking the evaporator might still be a little frozen. So what I've done is, Riemann Rude's reversing valves energize in the heat mode. So I've got a jumper across red in the reversing valve. I have the system running in heat mode right now to thaw out the indoor coil. I'll let that run like that for a few minutes. Let it thaw out the uh, indoor coil a little bit because we're nowhere close to town. It's not like I can just pull the disconnect and say, okay, well, I'll come back later because we are way out in the country. We're nowhere close to be in town for me to be able to do that. So we're gonna do it this way and then we'll get back to y'all as soon as we come up with a solution. All right, guys, I think I got part of our problem, if not the whole problem, figured out. When I was back here, I. I saw this fitting right here through my rubber text and I was like, golly, I said, man, that looks like a sharp bend. I said, I know I don't, I don't bend my stuff that sharp. So I peeled it back. And if you look right here, that's a 90. Now you can see where I made a swage right here. I swedged it and this is where I added on. So all this is original. Somebody's hit this unit with a lawnmower or something. That's a 90 fellas. And then look, it's making like a U instead of a 90. That 90 is almost completely closed off. And then right here, it's all kinked. It's the suction can't get it. It's we're at, we got a problem right here. I'm going to have to pump it down if possible and cut this out and redo it. Somebody definitely hit this unit. All right, guys, I got it cut out of there. There's our 90. Yeah, that's definitely not a 90 anymore. We're gonna use a zoom lock and replace it with a zoom lock 90. I'm gonna prep my tubing, sand it, deburr it, and get it ready. All right guys, have the zoom lock 90 in place. I had to get the Hillmore bender involved a little bit. So just because you have a zoom lock, doesn't mean that you want to give up your bender. The bender still did help me. I had to make a little bend right there to make it fit. So now we're going to lock everything in place. All right, guys, that easy. No torch involved. We're ready for vacuum. Well, nitrogen test, then vacuum. All right, guys, I have the system back online. Uh, the pressures are definitely better. They're not fantastic. Uh, they're definitely not as good as I'd like to see them. But I'm going to sit here with it for a minute and see what it looks like. But earlier it was, shit, it was like an 80-something 80, 80 suction, 70-something suction, and I've added no refrigerant. All I did was replace that 90. And you can see where it got hit right here too. But luckily that, that's not pinched off. That's just a dent, and it's on the service valve. And you can see the 45. It's not really a 45 anymore. Uh, but it's not pinched off either. Uh, the 90 was really what our problem was. But it's it's definitely not freezing up anymore. I mean, it would start freezing up almost instantly. And we're not freezing. I still, uh, like I said, the pressures are not... I mean, it's pretty cold in that house. It's like 68 degrees in there because it's not a very hot day. 
So I'm hoping that's all the issue is, but I'm gonna hang with it for a little bit and make sure everything looks okay. Okay guys, we're all done with that. I went and covered all my bases. Uh, I couldn't get any more video. It was about to start raining. At least I thought it was because the sky looks horrible. So I picked up all my gear and got out of there and continued to watch the refrigerant pressures and they never improved. So I tried adding a little bit of refrigerant. My head pressure and my sub cooling would climb but my suction wouldn't do anything. So I wanted to go make sure, uh, uh, you know, I, I covered everything. I, I wasn't able to get, you know, my eyes on the evaporator, but I found a, I peeled some of my tape back because I don't have any, I was just going to cut a, it's a dug board return. I was just going to cut me a hole in the dug board and then retape it, but I don't have any freaking silver tape on the truck. I must have left it all in my install trailer. So I just peeled some of my tape back that I had on the air handler. And I was able to get my phone in there and take a picture and I'll post a picture uh, right here of what the coil looks like it's 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 clean I mean it's spotless now it's starting to rain but uh coils not dirty at all so it looks like we have a restricted TXV I've already called the ream supply house which is also my ice piece supply house and they've got one in stock so i've got them holding it for me and we'll return to this job to replace that txv and uh that'll that that ought to be it and that was that probably all came from that when that suction line got kinked you know i told the homeowner that the unit got hit and of course you know they're i mean they were shocked you know they don't understand but we all know how that goes you know i mean more than likely the homeowner ran into it with his lawnmower but it is what it is all right guys thanks for watching we'll see y'all on the next one